Before we get to preparation of alcohols using sodium borohydride, let's take a look at a few of the other ways to make alcohols that we've already talked about in earlier videos. For example, you can make alcohols from alkenes, and you can add the OH on in a Markovnikov fashion, or you can add the OH on in an anti-Markovnikov fashion. So, so that's one one type of way to make your alcohols. You could also do so from alkyl halides. The process could be an SN1 process, or it could be an SN2 process. And then what we haven't talked about yet is how to prepare alcohols from carbonyl compounds. And there are a couple different ways to do that. You could use sodium borohydride, NaBH4, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. On the next video, we're going to talk about the use of lithium aluminum hydride, so LiAlH4. And you could also use an organometallic, something like a Grignard reagent. So I'll put that down here as well, too. And we'll talk about that in a future video as well. So all we have time for in this video is sodium borohydride. So let's check out the general reaction uh, for the use of sodium borohydride to form an alcohol. And so you can see over here on the left, we're starting with either an aldehyde or a ketone. So aldehyde or a ketone there. So there's either a hydrogen attached to your carbonyl or an R prime group like that. We're going to add sodium borohydride and then we're going to add a proton source. It could be just about anything, so uh, H plus tends to work. And we're going to form either a primary or a secondary alcohol, depending on our starting material. So this is going to be a primary or a secondary alcohol. Let's look at the mechanism uh, for the preparation of alcohols using sodium borohydride. So we'll start with our, uh, let's just go ahead and start with a ketone here so we're going to we're going to start with a ketone so we'll just do the reaction like that so I have my carbonyl like that put in my lone pairs of electrons and make this an R prime to make it our ketone and sodium borohydride comes along so let's go ahead and draw the structure for that so Na plus positive formal charge and then and then we have boron bonded to four hydrogens like that, and there's a negative one formal charge on our boron, so we'll go ahead and put that in there as well. So the mechanism I'm going to show you is a simplified mechanism. The actual mechanism is a little bit more complicated, but this mechanism works. So let's just go with the simplified version. All right, so the first thing you have to think about is this carbonyl here, this carbon double bonded to an oxygen. There's an electronegativity difference between the carbon and the oxygen. So right here, this carbon and this oxygen, the oxygen's more electronegative, meaning that those bonds uh, and the electrons in the double bond between the carbon and the oxygen are going to be pulled closer to the oxygen. Therefore, oxygen has a partial negative charge, right? So increased electron density around it, whereas the carbon here is losing some of the electrons around it, so it's partially positive, like that. So if carbon is partially positive, if carbon's partially positive, it's our electrophile, right? It wants electrons. So where can we get our electrons? We can get our electrons from right here. So the two electrons on this hydrogen here are going to move out and attack this carbon. So that's going to be that's going to be the nucleophilic portion of our molecule, like that. And that would be too many bonds to carbon. So one of these, uh, this pi bond here, is going to kick off onto the oxygen. So they're going to put two electrons on that. So let's go ahead and draw the result of that nucleophilic attack. So we have we have R, and then we have R carbon, and then R prime over here. And this top oxygen had two lone pairs of electrons. It just picked up one more for a total of three. And that gives it a negative one formal charge like that. And we added on a hydrogen like that. So let's go ahead and color code some electrons here. right? So we can see where everything went. So I'm saying this this hydrogen, right, and the two electrons in this bond right, became this hydrogen. and these two electrons right here. So really what you're doing is sodium borohydride is a source of hydride anions. So a hydride anion right, would be hydrogen with two electrons around it and a negative one formal charge. So that's the way to think about these reagents. Hydride itself is not the best nucleophile because it isn't polarizable enough. Right? It's such a, small, such a small atom that it doesn't really work very well as, as a nucleophile by itself. So this, of course, is our simplified version. All right, in the next step of our mechanism we get some acid base chemistry uh, so we have protons floating around right so we added some H plus to our solution and a lone pair of electrons picks up the proton and we are done so let's go ahead and draw the product would be our alcohol 
like that. And let's go ahead and put those lone pairs of electrons. And there's only one hydrogen added onto our carbon. So if we start with a ketone, we're going to end up with a secondary alcohol, as in this situation. All right, let's do, uh, let's do an actual reaction here. And let's start with uh, vanillin. All right, so vanillin is a very nice smelling molecule. All right, and if you look at the structure of vanillin, there's an aldehyde functional group right there on our ring. All right, so there's some other functional groups, so we'll go ahead and put in the rest of the vanillin molecule like that. All right, so we're going to add sodium borohydride in our first step. We're going to add sodium borohydride, and then once that's reacted, we're going to add a source of protons. HCl works pretty well for this, uh, for this reaction, so we'll just say a source of H plus like that. All right, so when you're, when you're trying to figure out uh, the product on a test, uh, it's, it's not even necessary to do that really simplified mechanism. You can pretend like the hydride ion is going to act as a nucleophile, even though we've already covered that it doesn't quite do that. So here we have our, our hydride nucleophile, all right? So it's going to attack, it's going to attack this carbon right here. This is, our, this is our carbonyl carbon, right? So it's going to be partially positive. That's going to kick these electrons off onto our oxygen like that. So let's go ahead and draw the, the intermediate for this reaction here. So we'll have our, our benzene ring like that. We'll put in our other functional groups over here, which don't participate in the reaction. And Let's go ahead and draw what we have here. So we have, we had, we had one hydrogen already bonded to that carbon. We just added another hydrogen onto that carbon, and then we have an oxygen still there with three lone pairs of electrons around it, giving it a negative one formal charge. So when we add our source of protons, right, a lone pair will pick up that proton there to form our alcohol. So we'll go ahead and draw our our product right over here. So once again, we have an OH coming off of our ring, right? We have a we have this part portion of the molecule, right? This ether portion right here, and then we have an alcohol like that. All right, so uh, this molecule, since it has such a similar structure to vanillin, also has a nice vanilla smell. It's very pleasant. So this is a very good undergraduate um, organic chemistry lab to do. And uh, let's classify the type of alcohol we got. We got it's either primary, secondary, or tertiary. So remember how to do that. You look at the carbon that's directly attached to the OH. That's this carbon. And you see how many carbons that carbon is attached to. That carbon is attached to one other carbon. So this is an example of a primary alcohol. So if you start with an aldehyde, right? So if you start with an aldehyde, as we did over here, this is our aldehyde, you're going to end up as a, with a primary alcohol as your product. Let's do another one. This time, let's do a ketone. All right, so let's go ahead and draw a ketone over here. So we'll do um, cyclohexanone. So here's our ketone, like that. And we're going to add sodium borohydride, like this, NaBH4. And we'll add methanol, and we'll do this all in one in one step here. So once again, think about sodium borohydride being a source of hydride anions, right? So again, even though this isn't technically the mechanism, right? It's our simplified version. So if you're taking a test, this is the easiest way to do it. Attacks that carbon, right? Kicks these electrons off onto your oxygen. So we have our intermediates right over here, right? So let's go ahead and draw that. So we have the hydride anion attack to form a new bond to what used to be our carbonyl carbon. Now this oxygen has three lone pairs of electrons around it and a negative one formal charge. It's going to pick up a proton from methanol as its proton source this time. And therefore, our final product, if we're going to go ahead and draw it, right, we'll go, I'll keep the hydrogen in there and you'll see why in a second. So, and then I have my, my OH like that. So I form cyclohexanol as my product. This is a reduction reaction, so we are we are reducing the molecule to form our alcohol. So let's let's take the reactant and the product from this from from, from this reaction, and let's assign some oxidation states so we can see how this is an example of a reduction reaction. So I'm just going to redraw our our starting ketone here. So let's go ahead and and put in some of the atoms this time. So I'm just going to redraw that starting uh, that starting ketone like this. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the product that we got as well. All right, so put in these carbons here, 
All right, and then we added on a hydrogen like that, and then we formed our alcohol over here like that. So let's go ahead and think about oxidation states. All right, so when we're signing oxidation states, we need to go ahead and draw in these electrons here. All right, so let me go ahead and put in these electrons on these guys right in here like that. All right, so let's uh, let's think about how we did this in some of their earlier videos, All right? We it's it's actually thinking about electronegativity, and if I'm thinking about the four electrons between carbon and oxygen, oxygen is more electronegative, so oxygen is going to get all of those electrons. So we go ahead and, and go like that. Uh, carbon versus carbon, right? Fighting over these two electrons, uh, it's an equal electronegativity, obviously, since it's the same element, right? So each carbon is going to get one of those electrons. All right, and the same thing for over here. So when we assigned our oxidation states, we said that it's the number of valence electrons that carbon normally has, which of course is four. And from that, we subtract the number of electrons around it when we, when we account for electronegativity, which is two in this case. So the oxidation state of that carbon is plus two. All right, so we have a plus two oxidation state on the left. Let's think about the right. Let's go ahead and put in our electrons, right? Each bond consists of two electrons. So we go ahead and put the fact that each bond consists of two electrons in here, like that. And then once again, we think about differences in electronegativity. So again, we know carbon versus carbon is a tie, so we can go like that. And carbon versus oxygen, right? Oxygen's more electronegative, so it's going to get those electrons there. But carbon versus hydrogen, carbon is, is a little bit more electronegative. So now carbon's going to take those two electrons. So carbon normally has four, right? In this case, carbon has four around it after we count for electronegativity, so the oxidation state of that carbon atom is zero. So let's think about what happened to the oxidation state. We started off with, uh, with a plus two oxidation state, and that number was reduced to an oxidation state of zero. So this is a reduction reaction, right? This is reduction. So several, di several different definitions you could use. You could think about uh, reduction being a decrease in the, or, or a decrease in the oxidation state or a, or a reduction in the oxidation state. You could also think about that carbon gaining electrons, right? So it picked up two more electrons. And uh, yet another way to think about it is uh, carbon lost a bond to oxygen, right? It had this over here on the left, carbon had two bonds to oxygen. Over here on the right, carbon only has one bond to oxygen. And it formed a bond with hydrogen, so increased number of bonds to hydrogen, decreased number of bonds to oxygen is another way to think about this being a reduction reaction. But assigning your oxidation states is probably the best way to do it. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to prepare alcohols using lithium aluminum hydride, which is very similar to using sodium borohydride.